Good morning, primary kids. Welcome to another session of Kids Time Online. This is our primary Sabbath school class for Sabbath, June 6. So welcome. Hope you enjoy our lesson today. Um, let's first talk about what we're thankful for. This week I'm thankful for the little blossoms that are popping out all over the Hazcat plants. That means lots of berries this year. We are so neat to watch how God makes berries grow on those bushes. So you tell each other what you're thankful for and then we will have our prayer. And remember you can send me a message with a prayer request or let me know what you're thankful for and I will be happy to pray for that. My number is 250-788-5339. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for, for making things grow like the berries and so many other good things in our garden that we get to enjoy later on. We love you and we thank you for taking care of us. Amen. All right. So we'll get into our mission story. You can find your offering jars and you can add some of your offering money this morning to your offering jar and this week our lesson our mission story is from Serbia and it's called Peaceful Sister. This story is about a 14 year old girl named Jelena and she tried to catch people's attention um, with her appearance she wore two or three earrings in each ear. She had two or three rings on every finger. She wore bracelets and necklaces. She wore lots of makeup. And she just really wanted to be noticed. And nobody could guess from her looks that she wasn't happy. But she wanted peace. Meanwhile, her older sister um, who was 19 years old, Lil Jana, began to prepare for baptism at a new, at New Belgrade Seventh Amherst Church. And every Bible study, she announced what she had learned at home. Mom was not happy that um, the older sister was learning about God and wanting to be baptized. There was a lot of fighting and arguing and yelling from Mom. She did not like that. But you know what, um, Jelena, she was noticing what was happening in her sister. And one day she said to God, if you are really alive, give me peace in my heart, she said. And suddenly it happened. She felt peace. She decided to follow God no matter what, Mother said. Jelena and her sister started praying under a blanket in Jelena's room. They left the house to study the Bible together. Even when it rained, they stood under an umbrella and read the Bible on the street. And Jelena kept reading the Bible. Her heart was touched by Jesus' great sacrifice in dying on the cross. That's it, she said. There's no turning back. She wanted to live for Jesus. And she thought, jewelry and makeup are my idol. And I don't want anything to divert my attention from God. So even though it was really hard for Jelena to change her appearance, she did. She got rid of her earrings and rings and necklaces and makeup. And she remembered that Jesus had given up everything in heaven to die for her. She prayed for his help. And finally, she did. She put everything in a box and she took it and got rid of it. But after she had put that stuff in the box and got rid of it, she felt peace really fall, come into her heart. Several months later, she was baptized. Little Jana and father came to her baptism, but mother refused. Jelena prayed for mother. She prayed every day for six years. One day, mother asked for Bible studies. She was baptized. 
Today, Jelena's favorite Bible verse is Jeremiah 1.19, which says, They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. This verse is the motto of my life, she said. This is my encouragement that God will help me. He hears my prayers and answers them. He gives me peace. So that is our story, mission story for today. All right, now, are you ready for our lesson? I have a tray of 10 things here, 10 food items. And I'm going to, oh boy, I'm going to try to bring this a little closer so you can have a good look at it, okay? So let me just look through the camera to see if you can see it. Hmm, not really. Okay, I'll lift it up a little bit. Things might slide. But I want you to look here. There's 10 things on this tray. Okay? <laughs> I'll try turning it around a bit. I want you to look at those things on the tray. Get, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to look at it. And then I'll cover it up and you will have to write down from memory what you see. So 30 seconds, okay? So if I get a good look at what's on this tray, there's 10 different kinds of food here. Let's see if you can see all those. Hopefully you can. All right, I am going to cover that up. All right, get your pen and or pencil and paper out and see if you can write down every item that you saw on the tray, okay? So go for it. See how many you can get. All right, if you need to pause the video, you can. Now, I want to check with you. So I'm going to call out what is on this tray and you check it on your list to see if you have it. We have jelly beans. We have a green pepper, a tomato, a maple leaf cookie, some grapes, some Ritz crackers, an apple, big carrot, mango juice, and marshmallows. How many did you get right? Did you get all 10 of them? Did you remember all 10 of them? Well, if you remembered all 10, good for you. You guys are amazing. Did you see something on that tray that you would like to eat? Do you ever have special foods to eat on Sabbath? Maybe I'll leave the tray out now for you to just look at and drool over. <laughs> Make you very hungry for Sabbath dinner. Yeah, so I think we do have special things we like to eat for Sabbath, don't we? I know some of you might have ice cream cake on Sabbath or haystacks, something that you really like. Our Bible story today is about the children of Israel and some special food God gave them. God taught them to be prepared with food for Sabbath. Some obeyed and some didn't. We'll see what happened when they didn't. The memory verse today is, If you call the Sabbath a delight, you will find your joy in the Lord. When we obey God and keep the Sabbath holy, we are worshiping Him. Today's message is, we worship God when we enjoy keeping the Sabbath. All right. So, what is it? Do you know what a desert is like? It is hot during the day and cold at night, with all sand and little or nothing growing. 
Where could you find food in a desert? The Israelites traveled in the desert and they were almost out of food. What do you think they did? Hmm, that's what our story is about today. God took such good care of the Israelites. He sent a cloud to shade them from the hot desert sun in the day. He sent a pillar of fire to light their camp at night. He had freed them from Egypt and destroyed their enemies in the Red Sea. But the Israelites were beginning to worry. It had been six weeks since God had led them out of Egypt, and the food they had brought with them was almost gone. Back in Egypt, we had all the food we could eat, they grumbled. But here in this desert, we are going to starve to death, they complained bitterly to Moses. Of course, God had no intention of letting them starve to death. I will rain down bread from heaven, God told Moses. It will be there in the morning. The people are to go out every day and gather an omer each, but they must not keep any of it until the next day. And I'm going to test them to see if they follow my instructions. Sure enough, the next morning the ground was covered with thin white flakes. The people were surprised. What is it? They asked again and again. What is it? What is it? What is it? It looked like frozen dew all over the ground. Moses told them, this is the bread God promised you. Gather it and eat it today, but don't try to keep any for tomorrow. It won't be good. All right, cut out there for a minute. So, where were we? Yes, so the people called it manna, remember, which means what is it? And they gathered it up and tasted it. It tasted sweet like honey, and there was enough for everyone. But as soon as the sun grew hot, the manna that remained on the ground melted away. Some people gathered a lot. Some people gathered a little. All the people had just what they needed, regardless of how much they gathered. Don't keep any of it until the next day, God had said, but some of them paid no attention. The next morning, their leftover manna was full of worms and smelled bad. Ugh. On the sixth day, the instruction was different. Today, you're going to gather twice as much, Moses said. Tomorrow is God's Sabbath, a day of rest. There won't be any manna on the ground in the morning, so get enough today and bake it or boil it, but save some of it for tomorrow. The double portion they were told to gather to keep for Sabbath would not get wormy. But some people didn't gather twice as much on Friday. Instead, they got up on Sabbath morning expecting to find manna. They had to learn their lesson the hard, hungry way. Of course, there was no manna on the ground that Sabbath morning, and there was none on any Sabbath that came after. How long will they refuse to follow my instructions? God sighed to Moses. The story of the manna teaches us two things. First, just like the Israelites, we honor God when we obey him. Following his directions is an act of worship. It also teaches us that God knows best. His plans for us are our own good, for our, our whew, his plans for us are for our own good. Following his instructions is the only way to really be happy. It took the Israelites a while to learn that they needed to follow God's instructions about the manna. They finally got it right, and it's a good thing, because that's what God fed them for the 40 years that they spent in the wilderness. They also learned how important the Sabbath is to God. He wanted them and us to make it a special day, different from other days. When they kept Sabbath special, when they didn't work by gathering manna, they were showing God their love and obedience, and they were really worshiping Him. All right, so our memory verse today is, if you call a Sabbath a delight, you will find your joy in the Lord. Right? So if you call the Sabbath a happy day, you will find your joy in the Lord. Isaiah 58, 13, and 14. God wants us to be happy and joyful on his day. That's why he has told us we don't to prepare on Friday so that we don't have to work so hard 
on Sabbath. We can really spend time with him in lots of different ways. So let's put our memory verse in order. These are my little flakes of manna. They're heart-shaped. Don't think manna was heart-shaped, but it kind of was flaky and lacy, like a doily. And I only had heart-shaped doilies. So this is what we have. Let's see if we can put this in order. If you call, that's how our memory verse starts. So here we go. If you call, what comes next? The Sabbath, remember we're talking about the Sabbath and how God wants us to spend it. If you call the Sabbath a delight, notice it doesn't say, if you call the Sabbath a dreaded time. No, it says, if you call the Sabbath a delight, you will find your joy, one more left, in the Lord. All right, so we've got our memory verse all lined up with our manna. If you call the Sabbath a delight, you will find your joy in the Lord. Okay, so... I have some questions for you. Not long before the Israelites were grumbling about food, they watched God overcome the Pharaoh of Egypt, part the Red Sea so they could walk across. They were very happy then, and they sang songs to God. There's one in Exodus 15, verse 1 and 2. So if you have your Bibles, look with me. The second book in the Old Testament, so Exodus chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord because he is worthy of great honor. He has thrown the horse and its rider into the sea. The Lord gives me strength and makes me sing. He has saved me. He is my God, and I will praise him. He is the God of my ancestors, and I will honor him. That was a part of a song that they sang to God. So where can we worship God? That's my question. I'm going to say a few different places, and you tell me with thumbs up signal if you can show God your love there, okay? So, where can we worship God? Can we worship God at school? Okay. Can we worship God at church? Thumbs up. How about a friend's house? Got your thumbs up? A park? A dentist's office? That's strange. But can we worship God at a dentist's office? You betcha. Thumbs up. At home, definitely thumbs up. Playground, a swimming pool, a grocery store, at a lake, on a mountain. Do you get my point? We could go on and on and on. There are many places we can worship God. Church is a very special place because we come and worship together on Sabbath. But we can show God we love Him by being obedient and kind wherever we are. That is what worship is all about. Obeying God, um, being kind and loving to others. So, thumbs up to all those places that we can worship God. Alright, now, our last thing today is you're going to make some manna, a.k.a. snowflakes. They're manna flakes. You're going to make manna flakes and then write the memory verse on your manna flake. And then share it with somebody and tell them the story of how God took care of the Israelites by giving them food every day and extra on Friday so they could have a special Sabbath day with Him on Sabbath. So I think you probably all know how to make snowflakes. But in case you don't, 
take a piece of white paper, kind of fold the corner right over to the side so that you can make a square. Cut off that little extra piece. Open your paper back up. Fold it in half. Fold it in half again. So now you have a small square and hold it down at the folded corner where all edges are folded. Take your scissors. Don't cut the bottom, the corner there where, you, where you're holding. And then you can just, I don't know, cut however you want. My snowflakes are never very awesome, really. They're kind of boring. You guys make really cool ones. But cut those pieces out, except remember not to cut down at that corner. And then open it up, and there you have a mana flake, and write your, your memory verse on it. All right? So make some mana flakes, share them around, and have an awesome week remembering that Jesus loves you, and that he made Sabbath a very special day for you to worship with your family. But you can worship God any day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing by being obedient and being kind and loving to others. So have a great week kids and I will see you next Sabbath on Kids Time Online. Have a great day.